Hi, it's Katrina. Number 10. Missing Teeth In the African country of Gabon, scientists were digging around in a subterranean cave looking for evidence of ancient humanity. While they were exploring, they found these skulls of adults from the medieval era. They didn't exactly date back to the beginning of human history, but it was still a good find. But the discovery got even better when the French and Gabonese research team realized there was something very odd about the skulls. Gabon is a country in West Central Africa, a very old and very traditional place. The archaeologists were working at a cave called Irungu, and they found a total of 28 skeletons dating back from between the 14th and 15th centuries. They also discovered metal tools, old pieces of weaponry, and discarded jewelry. Over 500 artifacts were pulled out of the cave, which was only accessible through a narrow cavity in the roof. The research team believes the medieval inhabitants dropped their dead ones and their grave goods through the opening, piling up the bodies below. The people who were dumped into this cave, as crass as that may sound, were actually the most important in society. Not only were they buried with all kinds of beautiful jewelry, but each skull had the front four teeth of their upper jaw missing. All the tooth sockets had healed, meaning the teeth had all been removed on purpose. What the researchers have found here in Africa is one of the weirdest incidences of intentional dental modification ever. Lots of ancient people modified their teeth, put jewels in them, or sharpened them into fangs. But removing the upper four incisors is one of the most extreme examples that archaeologists have ever come across. Number 9. The Stone Chrysalis It was during the Yangshao period of China, between 7,000 and 5,000 years ago, that a thriving Neolithic culture learned how to produce raw silk using silkworms. It was arguably one of the greatest achievements in early human history, with silk becoming one of the most valuable exports of China for thousands of years to come. After all, the Silk Road didn't get its name for nothing, as it transported silk from China across Asia and into Europe in the first century AD. Now, all these years later, Archaeologists have just discovered a crafted stone chrysalis 5,200 years old. They recovered it in the Shanxi province of China, proving once and for all just how ancient and important the silk industry is to the Far East. The carved chrysalis is just what it sounds like, a small artifact carved from stone to look just like a silkworm's chrysalis. The discovery was announced by the Provincial Archaeology Research Institute in China. Researchers found the relic hiding inside of a crypt house in the city of Yucheng, where it had been stashed unseen for centuries. What the artifact shows is just how obsessed the ancient Yangshao culture was with silkworms. They were their bread and butter, their livelihood, and so most people likely had one or two silkworm-related statues in their homes. Some experts say they wouldn't even be surprised if the Yang Shao had worshipped some kind of mysterious silkworm entity. Number 8. Viking Beaver Fur Scientists with the University of Copenhagen recently confirmed their suspicions that Vikings in 10th century Denmark were crazy for beaver fur. Beaver fur was actually a massive symbol of wealth and one of the most important luxury trade items to the Vikings. Forget about robbing stashes of gold and silver. The Vikings wanted beaver fur. One of the reasons this wasn't already confirmed is that fur doesn't really survive well. Even after just a couple of decades, fur decays and dies. Considering the Viking Age was between 800 to 1050 AD, any kind of animal pelts from back then are already gone, so archaeologists couldn't really find any actual Viking furs. Instead, the researchers had to look through written sources to find out that fur was one of their most important commodities. However, they had one other way of looking into the issue as well. Researchers studied various animal corpses from graves throughout Denmark dating back to the 10th century. And while they didn't manage to get any ancient DNA, they did look at the proteins to see what kind of animals high-ranking Vikings were buried with. The overwhelming results showed Vikings had the remains of squirrels, weasels, and beavers in their graves. Now, seeing as beavers are not native to Denmark, that means the Vikings would have gotten the fur through trade, most likely through a very distant trade. 
The most important members of Viking society then adorned themselves in furs and made sure they were even buried with them. Number 7. The Cahokia Plaza Cahokia was yet another great ancient city in the Americas. This one was many thousands of miles away from Peru, located in the vicinity of modern St. Louis near the Mississippi River. It was built around the year 1050 AD and prospered for over 300 years before being suddenly abandoned by 1400. This has totally boggled archaeologists because Cahokia, which is believed to have been the biggest Native American city on the East Coast, was abandoned prior to European intervention. The city fell apart all on its own without help from outside forces. A new discovery could just solve the mystery of what happened here. Archaeologists have been investigating Cahokia since the 1960s, but only recently found evidence that the main plaza of Cahokia was almost always underwater. The entire north plaza of the city was likely under several feet of water most of the year because the whole thing was built on an ancient floodplain. According to Caitlin Rankin, geoarchaeologist at the Illinois State Archaeological Survey, only 1% of Cahokia has been excavated, meaning there is a lot that researchers don't know. Caitlin was also the one who took soil samples to figure out that the northern plaza used to be underwater. But how exactly the plaza was used remains a mystery, as is the rest of the site. Water was clearly important to the people of Cahokia, especially since they used the wetlands for agricultural purposes. The water could have helped them trade up and down the Mississippi River with other indigenous groups. But why they had an entire quarter of their city underwater is just too strange a riddle to solve with the evidence we have available. Number 6. Anglo-Saxon Burials During work on a new high-speed railway line near the small town of Wendover in England, excavators came across what's now believed to be one of the biggest Anglo-Saxon burial sites in all of Britain. It dates back to the 5th century AD and was found to be filled with the skeletons of high-status people. There were a total of 138 graves, 141 inhumation burials, and 5 cremations. There was also evidence of human activity dating from between the Neolithic Age and the Roman Age. Most of the artifacts would have been of extreme value 1,500 years ago. Many of the items had even been imported from far away in Europe, like fancy drinking vessels once used for fine foreign beverages. But by far, the most interesting burial was that of an unidentified female. She was found buried with a vast array of treasure. The sheer quality of the treasure shows that she was somebody of extreme importance, and researchers say she may have even had Roman blood. Some of the things she was buried with had clearly come from the Roman era hundreds of years earlier, suggesting they were heirlooms passed down through generations. And now for number 5. But first, want to give a big shout out to Junaid Munif and Charles Stoner. Thanks so much for watching and spending time with us. If you are new here, welcome and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Number 5. Lost Buried Ship Tallinn is the capital city of the Baltic country of Estonia. It's located in northern Europe near Norway and just to the west of Russia, right at the edge of the Baltic Sea. The port in the city of Tallinn is one of the oldest in all of Europe and was a famous trading center in ancient times. Over 1,000 years ago, the Vikings of Scandinavia and the Rurik of Rus met here to swap goods. Just recently, workers at a construction site stumbled across an ancient ship from 700 years ago, quietly hiding underneath the streets of the capital. Not just a little bit under the streets, but approximately 5 feet deep, buried right under the sediment that modern Estonia was built on. The ship had once rested at the mouth of the Harjapea River, a waterway that went extinct centuries ago and was built over. Researchers believe the ship belonged to the Hanseatic League. These people had a virtual monopoly over all of the maritime trade in the North Sea and the Baltic Sea. They even went to war against King Valdemar IV of Denmark. The League was so successful that they absolutely humiliated the King of Denmark and massively reduced the profits that the Danish people were receiving from sea trade. In the end, this is a really amazing discovery. The boat is well preserved, and it's actual evidence of a distinct time in history when Europe was under the thumb of a merchant guild. The Hanseatic League controlled pretty much all of the commerce from Germany to Russia.
And if you weren't a member, well, too bad. Number 4. Preserved Termite Poop In the ancient Peruvian city of Chan Chan, archaeologists discovered something uniquely surprising. They were excavating the ceremonial entranceway to an ancient palace when they found wooden guardians flanking each side of the passage. The archaeologists were thrilled to find actual statues made of wood, seeing as most wooden artifacts decay quite rapidly. But when they physically inspected the statues, they got the surprise of a lifetime. All 19 of the statues had been chewed through completely by termites, who changed the wood into termite poop. These weren't wooden statues, they were figures made up almost entirely of extremely old insect excrement. According to the archaeology director, Henry Galloso, not all the statues received the same treatment. Some were built almost entirely of excrement, while others still had the core wooden structure preserved underneath a thick layer of insect poop. It's all been quite disturbing, but also immensely fascinating considering where these statues were found. Chan Chan was the biggest and most important city to the ancient Chimu civilization. It was also one of the biggest cities anywhere in the Americas prior to the arrival of Europeans. And yet nobody is entirely sure when exactly the Chimu people abandoned their great city, nor why their seemingly successful civilization vanished without a trace. All we know at this point is that after they left, termites invaded and ate all of their statues. Number 3. Our Ancient Ancestors On July 8, 1994, an archaeological dig made history when the very first remains of the last common human ancestor were found at the Atapuerca site in Burgos in Spain. Over the next 12 months, researchers dug up over 80 fragments of bone from six individuals, including a child of only about 10 years old. This site quickly became listed by UNESCO as a place of great importance, as it contained some of the oldest human remains ever discovered. This became such a big discovery that the Spanish archaeologist involved, Aurora Martín Najera, has since started the Museum of Human Evolution not far from the dig site. Archaeologists unearthed over 200 stone tools that date back to at least 800,000 years ago. The discovery changed history, completely altering the public's perception on human evolution in Europe. The really interesting thing about these human remains is that they appeared to be some kind of mix between ancient Homo heidelbergensis, the predecessor of the Neanderthal, and modern Homo sapiens. Whoever had lived in these caves were definitely descendants of the older heidelbergensis, yet also closely related to us. They were essentially our distant cousins, a group of primitive cannibals who ate one another. Researchers know they practiced cannibalism because of marks found on the bones. These were hominid primates who used stone tools to rip their friends apart and eat them when the going got tough. They also may have been the first hominids in Western Europe some 250,000 years before anyone else. But just wait, because this is how precarious archaeology can be. In 2016, over 20 years after the discovery, DNA analysis finally showed that these were not a new species at all. In fact, they were a misidentified group of cannibal Neanderthals from 430,000 years ago. Number 2. The Sun Temple Archaeologists in Egypt have discovered a mysterious sun temple during excavations at the Abu Sir necropolis near Saqqara. They found a small building made of mud brick and quartz blocks standing forgotten inside a complex of over 14 royal pyramids and tombs. But this mysterious building might be even more impressive than everything else at the site. That's because, according to officials with the Egyptian Ministry of Antiquities and Tourism, the ruins might belong to one of just four long-lost sun temples. The sun temples were built during the 5th dynasty of Egypt, from between 2465 to 2323 BC. Their purpose was to honor the Egyptian god of the sun, Ra, who was the ruler of all kings and the sky itself. These mysterious sun temples would have been the meeting places of the cult of Ra, where devout followers of the god went to give praise and sacrifice in the form of offerings. The temples were also very important to the pharaohs of Egypt, since they claimed to have a close connection to Ra himself. 
And while we don't know for sure if this broken ruin is indeed one of the ancient legendary temples, Egyptian archaeologists certainly seem to think so. Number 1. Tomb of the Egyptian Commander A team of archaeologists from Charles University in Prague recently unearthed a tomb in Egypt that belonged to a powerful military commander. The researchers were doing excavations near the Giza Plateau when they came across the commander's grave. He was buried in a tomb 2,500 years ago, and his name was Wa-Ibra Merinate. The Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities says he was an army leader who served in the late 26th dynasty or the early 27th dynasty, near the year 500 BC. But he wasn't any ordinary commander. Wa-Ibra Merinate was the leader of a military battalion of foreign mercenaries. This was an extremely interesting period in Egyptian history. It was the first real age of globalism and the first time that foreign soldiers began fighting for whoever could pay them the most money. These were very real mercenaries, skilled warriors who made tons of cash by fighting in wars they had absolutely no stake in. Sadly, the great mercenary commander wasn't physically present in his tomb. When archaeologists entered his not-so-final resting place, they found that his sarcophagus had been smashed and his body pulled out of it. Seeing as ceramic vessels were left behind from around the 4th century AD, the robbery most likely happened over 1,000 years ago. Thanks for watching! Be sure to hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you next time! Bye!